<laughs> All right. Three, two, one, action. Hello and welcome to the worst movie ever made, an experiment of the movie podcast designed with one thing in mind to find the worst movie ever made. I'm your host, Chris Hockman. I'm joined by my co-host and fellow mad scientist, Rob Scucci and Bob Hasek. Hey guys, how are you and why are we doing Godzilla 1998? Because we wanted to see how desperately Harry Shearer and Hank Azaria were renegotiating their Simpsons contracts during this <laughs> time in the late 90s. Hey, there was, there was a third Simpsons actor in there. Who, who did I miss? The one that does Bart's voice. She was uh, oh, Nancy the secretary. Cartwright. She was Harry Se- Harry Shearer's secretary. Oh shit! Oh no way! Yeah. So they, they had I, to be doing. Had, a, yeah, I had to look it up. They, they had to be doing a contract reneg or something like that. Like, all right, we we want another million dollars per episode, so we're gonna star in Godzilla, which is gonna be a fucking <laughs> resounding success. There's no way anything can possibly go wrong. Um, Bob, do you do you care to explain this movie and how it goes and what it's all about after uh, your exp- uh, your explanation bumper? Yeah, ready. All right. Let's get a little groovy and have Bob explain the movie. So for your consideration, here's Bob's alliteration. Yeah. Okay, the alliteration is grotesquely gargantuan gila generates gilded goods. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautifully put. <laughs> All right. Because so d- due to excessive nuclear testing in the French Poly- French Polynesia, yeah, yeah. a new yeah. super lizard was spawned <clears throat> due to mutation. And uh, I, I put this in quotes, nuclear growth. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I think so. What the explanation is. <laughs> and for some cheaply explained reason, the lizard ends up in New York City after destroying a few boats in order to lay hundreds of eggs in, yes, Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and <laughs> lots yeah. of carnage and disasters result, and a sequel is hinted at the end, of course. It is. It is indeed. Mm-hmm. Which is something we'll talk about in great lane yes. after Rob takes us to YouTube. Yeah. The worst movie ever made presents <laughs> YouTube comments <laughs> made by people. <laughs> Who clearly have daddy issues. Ah! My father! All right. <laughs> Number one, I always love the scene where the dump trucks leave the mountain of fish for Godzilla in the street. Also got a good <laughs> chuckle from the line, that's a lot of fish, LOL. <laughs> Next comment. Mm-hmm. I saw this movie when it was at the theater and still love it. Got the soundtrack and the DVD. One of my favorite movies. <laughs> Don't care what anybody says. For me, Godzilla forever. I was trying Those to... all caps? Everything I emphasized was capitalized, yes. Okay. With several <laughs> explanation points. Um, next comment. None of the other ones will ever top this Godzilla for me. It had everything. The type of nostalgia American movies used to have and not anymore. This type of movie making was what made the rest of the world fall in love with America. I will never get tired of this movie. And I don't care what special effects they'll come up with. For me, none will take its place. Wow. And there's 17 replies to that one. And I'm just not going to bother reading them for (laughs) obvious reasons. Next comment. I love the different design of this Godzilla and how agile he is. I cried at the ending of this movie, colon, parenthesis, old school emoji. (laughs) And then this this one user, uh, JZL at Caravan, two weeks ago, I I sorted by most recent comments. He just posted a bunch of timestamps in rapid succession in separate comments. Number one, 2732, (laughs) the panic in the streets. 2543, landfall. 2950. God, oh I God. love this shot. 4613, got to love it when a giant monster takes time to notice you. 4543, <laughs> amazing tear smiling face emoji. 
Oh God! Wow, not the not the timestamps I sent you, Rob. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's. Maybe. You know what? Let's um, let's compare it to its competition in test number one, the worst of its kind. Salami. The worst of its kind. Yeah, so if you don't know, uh, all the clips were <clears throat> stolen from uh, last the last seasons. I almost said last year's, but it was last year, I guess. Yeah, technically. Um, <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> I'm gonna order a pizza second. at 11:45 p.m. on New Year's Eve, and then I'm gonna say the pizza took a year to get here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we uh, we that's where all the carrot and uh, yeah, whatever jokes came yeah. in. That's where a sound by Turbompers came from. <clears throat> Let's start with Independence Day with Bill Pullman. I said Bill Pullman because his speech is amazing in that movie, and that movie is great. And we all mm. love that movie. It's like uh, that's a super uh, uh, <laughs> uh, We? 68. Should have been a 98. Mm. Drown yeah. Bob out. Drown Bob out. Yeah, Will Smith. Jurassic as well. Park. Yep. <laughs> Sam Neill. Jeff Goldblum, a 91. Holy okay. moly. King Kong with Naomi Watson. Jack Black. I don't know if you've seen that one. No. I like Skull Island or something, uh, an '84 there. Yeah, yeah. Um, surprised it had an '84. Actually, I didn't think it was that good. Uh, Pacific Rim with Charlie Day and Idris Elba, '72. Haven't seen it. Don't care about giant things roaming like in cities, which is yeah. partly why I hate this movie yeah. that we're doing now. Uh, yeah. The uh, '72, if I didn't say uh, the day after tomorrow with Jake Jelly Hall <laughs> and uh, Dennis Quaid is a '45. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, an average of 72. How did Godzilla do? I mean, based on YouTube. I mean, I know what it got, but I say based on YouTube, it, it's got to be like a 70. Uh, yeah, based, based on, YouTube, based on my right? opinion, I say 20. A 20 exactly, Bob. Oh, yeah. Nice that. one. Was, you, get you get $100. You get $100 for that. $100 bill. <laughs> I don't know. That brings us to a negative 52 and worst of its kind. We'll see how that stacks up against our current season champion, Christmas Story 2, later in the episode. As for now, we will all sum this movie up uh, in a way that we think is funny. We hope you do, too. In test number two, Limic version, this is Ain't That a Pitch. Hey, I have to go third on this because I didn't write one. So, um, just I gotta know oh, time, okay? <laughs> Excuse me, madame. May I have a little kiss, please? A little kiss, please. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> Alright, who goes first then? You or me? I'll go first. I, I haven't gone in a while. <laughs> right. Plus, I'll, I I read slow, so that's good for Rob. <laughs> there once was a perfectly good monster from Japan. No, make it come from French Polynesia was the new plan. <laughs> Broderick gives no effort. No, No major character gets hurt. I'd like to return to my mem my memories before this movie began. Yeah, I am. That's just that. Yeah, well weaved. Uh, <clears throat> a giant nuclear monitor lizard, an Allosaurus maybe. My timbers are shivered. Jean Reno, sick. Matthew Broderick, I can't believe this wasn't totally wizard. <laughs> oh, how do we we have similar endings? Okay. Oh, um, really? <laughs> <laughs> there there once was a giant lizard who had a massive egg-filled gizzard proven pregnant by a worm scientist which made the mayor pissed. I'd rather watch that shit Chris likes with wizards. <laughs> you know, which one? Rob just wrote that. I'm going to have to vote for Rob. <laughs> oh, man. Four star. <laughs> Four star. I like it. I'll take it. Uh, I haven't voted. Where are you going, Rob? I was going to I was going to say I like the shivered timbers. So I was gonna say Chris, but I'm gonna give you a four because I don't wanna. I don't wanna give you the upper edge. Okay, I'll give me a five for a four point five star victory. Great job, Chris. <laughs> now that that's cataloged, I'll throw it in the back of our uh, outline and we'll throw it right now to test number three, the most offensive. Good job, Chris. Oh my god! Fuck you. <laughs> All of you got the most important thing ah! to be as offensive as possible. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! All right. My father! My father! You didn't want to give Chris the edge. <laughs> the edge. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, 
Uh, number five, this is unprofessional paleontologist pickup pick up attempt. So what I mean by that is uh, towards the beginning of the movie, this paleontologist who is, for some reason, uh, Matthew Broderick's boss. I, yeah. I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah. She's like hitting on him in the car. Yeah. Heavily. Just just so that we find out that, you know, you're you're supposed to think Matthew Broderick is cute after Ferris Bueller. But I, I yeah. haven't thought he's cute since Ferris Bueller. So I don't really get it. The important part offensive. is that you, the important part is you thought he was cute at one point. Of course, yes. when he's in the shower singing, adorable. You know, got to give it to him, yeah. right? Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Don <Right. Shane. laughs> Uh Bob, you mentioned this already, but number four is sincerely stupid sequel setup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I just don't understand. Like, like what happened? Here's why. What happens when that egg breaks open and the thing just like has no idea what it's doing, and just runs into New York City? It was uh, pitched as a trilogy, but oh. obviously that never. Even though it made money, okay. that didn't. That never came to fruition. Um, no. It was terrible. Yeah, it's yeah. Terrible. Uh, number three, step on it, Mister French. <laughs> That's an actual quote. I think it was Hank yeah. Azaria's animal character uh, is trying to get Jean Renault, who is like driving the car to go faster. So he calls him Mr. French, which I think is an outdated even in 98 reference. But um, yeah. I can't be sure. Uh, yeah. I I only I only know that I heard that once before in Mr. Deeds. And if you share a line with that movie, you're a bad movie, too. That was the beginning <laughs> of the end for Adam Sandler before like he had another resurgence that was yeah his netflix resurgence when they paid yeah. him like 100 million or something you know with the cobbler <laughs> yeah the cobbler yeah man what a banger yeah <laughs> if you don't know the bank uh, the uh cobbler is uh adam sandler is uh, like a shoemaker and then he finds out he has like a secret ability where like if he puts on people's shoes he becomes them right <laughs> something like that <laughs> i've never seen that or he's don't. made of pe or he's made of peaches <laughs> yeah it could be that too <laughs> or yeah anyway number two is a clip it should be number one but they went even further uh with number one so this is dinner mm. this one is the midget version this one makes me look like a trained professional can we put this on the five please you think i should ask him no i'm gonna ask him no i will did you talk with humphreys this is not the place. Just tell me, did you talk with him? Uh, said he'd consider it. It's between you and Rodriguez. Are you serious? He's going to consider me for the job? What else did he say? Well, um, why don't we talk about it over dinner tonight? Your place. Mr. Kamen, you're married. Yes, and you're very beautiful. Have I ever told you that before? Mr. Kamen? <laughs> I've been doing research for you after hours and weekends for over three years. This is a very important job to me. I'm too old to be your assistant anymore. I need to know this job is going someplace. So, have dinner with me tonight. I can't. It's your choice. So Reverend Lovejoy wants to go on a pump and run on his uh, subordinates. <laughs> Tummy. Hey, you, you want the job. You got to make sacrifices, I guess. Yeah. It's New York, you know? Oh, yeah. Geez. Do you know what it reminds me of is Cobra? It's she. Uh -huh. It's uh, Bridget Nielsen, and she's trying to get like a modeling job or something. And the photographer is like, "I would give it to you if you slept with me." <laughs> he's yeah, he's like right. way more upfront about it. Uh, yeah. But then that guy gets like axe murdered immediately, and that that yeah. was an attempt for for like we were supposed to hate that guy, so it was okay that he got axe murdered. We're supposed to hate this guy. It was another feeble attempt to you know force in character development, which is something that. I hated about this movie, and we'll talk more about it in the catch-all for sure, if not yeah. before. Um, but if you didn't catch it right in the beginning, he uses the M word, which is definitely one you don't use now. You didn't use back yeah. in 98 if you were uh, sensitive to other people's um, mm, sensitivities, I'll say. <clears throat> so uh, there was that. But uh, number one, I said M word for uh, number two. Number one is the R word. It is in this movie, and you just don't do it. I think it's Animal's uh, girlfriend, who nice. yeah. um, I will not be recasting later. A little foreshadowing yeah. for you. Um, 
his wife, Animal's wife, uh, calls him the R word. Just don't mm-hmm. do it in a movie ever. Yeah. Even back even back then in ninety eight, you knew not to do it. I mean, South Park probably used it once or twice, but they knew they shouldn't. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Just don't put it in your movie. Yeah. That's what I got. Let's throw it to Rob's ad read. Hold on, I, I actually, gotta mention. Ooh, ooh. Uh, Bob, you, you, you go first, Bob, then I'll go next. Nice. Um, like Animal's wife calls him the R word. And then yeah. about about I don't know, two scenes later, she says, Damn right, you crazy wop. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Yep. I didn't get that. that. True. Maybe I should have cli- maybe I should have clipped that instead. <laughs> it's really like it's even harder to hear than get back here, you R word. Yeah. yeah. I I wrote both of them down just in case you missed them because they were both like at the very t- like tail end of a quick scene change. Yeah. Yes. And uh so yeah, that was <laughs> that might need to go in most offensive as like a, a, a honorable mention. I wrote it down so that way I can use it in future weeks. Right. Say it were say it were to win, which I I'm maybe not expecting it. To. But we'll see. Win. We'll see. You know, it's science. We're objective here. Yeah. Episode uh, fourteen of season seventy one. I think yeah. we are absolutely by the books at this point. We know what we're doing. Rob, what was I, your mention? I went with alliterations here. Frenchie frequently flicking phalanges on fully automatic firearms. He's a little liberal with the guns. <laughs> just a little, little bit. He is. That's true. Yeah, he is. So, I mean, I mean, I he just starts opening like they're in Madison Square Garden's like recording room where they're trying to get in there and the door's locked and everyone's like trying to open it. He just shoots like right next to their hands with his gun. Yeah. To open yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, but I guess if it's the uh, end of the world, as you see it, you, you mm-hmm. play drastic measures. But yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't we throw it to your ad read? Sure. Go down to Marie Callender's. Get me a big bowl of pie, some ice cream on it. Mmm, good. Put some on your head. Your tongue would slap your brains out trying to get to it. Interested? Sure. Rob's ad read. Today's episode of The Worst Movie Ever Made is brought to you by TikTok user Alan, a man who never listened to our show but accuses us of ripping off somebody else's show anyway. <laughs> like, there's only one movie review podcast out there, and we have to copy it to be successful. We don't, and we're not. But despite his innate ability to call us out for being derivative, the only creative content he's ever published on the platform is a video of himself singing Limp Biscuit over the beat of his washing machine. Real original. We've never seen anything like that before. Wow, impressive. Somebody give this guy a Webby Award. Fuck you, Alan. <laughs> uh, you so can email is... us at www.theworstmovieevermade.com That's Alan, yeah, Alan actually, H he... I spared your last name, fuck you He he might be the first person to actually call and make Or uh, email us <laughs> and make fun of us Like really dig into us I, I hope you do, Alan uh, I uh, am usually doing the social media stuff And it's usually not Rob uh, know, for, And for good now reason. you know why Now you know why <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is test number four, the worst dialogue. Yeah. Bad dialogue may include something like... He's in there every night. This damn gang selling stupid cocaine. Stupid cocaine. Stupid cocaine. <laughs> stupid. Uh, number... Five. This is not true. I, I can't believe it, I mean... He did all of this, and uh, we did nothing to him. Oh, that's not true. We fed him. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> that's really funny. We just heard it a couple times. That's the only reason we weren't laughing just now. He's, he's to your point, in foreshadowing, for later, he, he's not the right guy for this movie. He is. No. He is not. No. I felt that way about so many characters in this movie yeah. that they were cast poorly, wow. and uh, I feel bad at saying that about uh, Hank Azaria also because I know you guys like him. But a it guy had, named Animal. Yeah. It really had uh, Inspector Gadget vibes. Like, yeah, the fact yeah. that Roderick has shown up twice now in this show. Yeah, no surprise really. He's I I like, think maybe <clears throat> yeah. next year. I think it's Deck the Halls with Danny DeVito. Maybe we can do that for Christmas. Have you seen it? Is it no, Deck the no. Hall? Oh, God. It's a Christmas movie where Danny DeVito and Matthew Broderick like 
get into a light up their house in their neighborhood off. Oh, oh God. I may yeah. have seen that on like daytime TV when I was like doing homework when I was in like yeah. high school. It's horrible. But anyway, so it's something to consider for next holiday season. The season that is yeah. now over, uh, which I'm not happy about because going into gray and dry and uh, cold January just makes me depressed. Anyway, hey, here's number. Serbian wait Christmas till... is on Sunday, so oh, keep is it? Celebrating. It is. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. I, wait till December. February because it gets worse. Yeah, true. <laughs> this is short. Number number four. This is puke chunk. <laughs> mm. My life sucks. Oh please, your life doesn't suck. His life sucks. If I'm married to you. I cannot believe he put the moves on me after everything I've done for him. He is scum. As far as he's concerned, he's just a pair of breasts to talk. Hey, there's an image. I'm telling you, he is dirt. He's a douchebag, gutter slime, dog crap, puke chunk. Hey, hey, I'm eating. You don't see I'm eating? Poetry. You're too damn nice. That's your problem. Nice gets you nothing in this town. It's dog eat dog. You gotta be a killer to get ahead. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, baby, but you just don't got what it takes. You don't think that's true, do you, animal? Yeah, pretty much. You're a nice person, you know? Nice guys finish last. Well, I can be tough if I want. Yeah, sure. It can. <laughs> it can. No, yeah, no. Whatever. Hm. Yeah. Nice guys finish last, huh? Uh-huh. Is there a feather involved? <laughs> Every breath you take. Um, she rattles off. It's like the Christmas vacation, um, overdone thing where she rattles off a bunch of insults in a row. Nobody talks like yeah. that. No. Nope. And it's got puke chunk in it. I feel like we're watching Hook again. Yeah. Right. You know and when I, they're having I, that like food fight and the, he and Rufio get in a, a big argument, and yeah. they're like hurling insults at each other and they're very childish and the other kids are like, oh, you're going to get him back? That's what that yeah. felt like. Uh, <clears throat> let's move it to number three. This has the trademark uh, Chris hates this kind of dialogue feel to it. You'll you'll see. Mm. This is pregnant. Me, sir, I, I, I think this situation has become more complicated than that. The blood that I collected revealed that the creature is either about to lay eggs or already has. Are you trying to tell us that there's another one of those things out there? No, no, Governor, I, I don't believe so. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. That, then how can it be pregnant? What is this, the virgin lizard? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it reproduces asexually. That's why we have to find the nest as soon as possible. Otherwise, up to a dozen are going to be born, each one capable of laying eggs on its own. Very quickly, we could be looking at an enormous population. Well, so after we kill the creature, then we'll search for the nest. No, I think it might be too late by then. These eggs are going to hatch very quickly. How could you possibly know that? The fish, the fish that we found on the subway, he's not collecting all his food just for himself. He's preparing to feed his young. How could you know that? That's a good question. Which part? The fact that it's Every asexual? Part. The fact that it's pregnant yeah. because you collected blood and put it into a pregnancy test? Aren't you supposed to piss on those? You don't put your yeah. blood on them. Uh, I'll be talking about that later. Um, but it reminded <laughs> me of, I haven't brought up South Park in a while, where um, where they find out Earth is a reality part. TV show, and they're just like, the scientist is like, wait a minute, butt sex. But sex requires lubrication. Lubra, lubra, chubacabra, a mythological beast. <laughs> and he's like, it's a radio broadcast. And Chef is sitting there like, who's having butt sex? <laughs> That's uh, yeah, that was a great episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's speaking my, of my super... daughter's favorite. <laughs> oh, great. Speaking Jesus of God. super funny, uh, the virgin lizard joke was the icing on yeah. the cake for number three for me. Like everybody yeah. in, in the... Um, uh, episodes laughing. Have you have you guys um ever heard uh the rewatchables? Another uh it's a movie podcast, so it's another one we're ripping off. Oh, um, directly, yes. yes. I've never heard yes. it, but I'm sure we're doing exactly what they do, according to uh, right, yeah, no, we Alan we haven't uh, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, there's it's this exact same framework. 
anyway, um, they, they're talking about Under Siege with Steven Seagal, which actually is like a pretty good movie, despite that Steven Seagal's in it. No, it's not. Because Tommy Lee Jones is. Um, yeah. And he's just delivering lines. Like, somebody's like, at the very end, they're like, oh, I want to see you in the infirmary. This is after Steven Seagal's character killed like 90 people without getting punched, you know? <laughs> so they're like, I want to see you in the infirmary. You're, you might need some stitches. And he's like, I don't know. I'm afraid of needles. And like Bill Simmons was like, <laughs> Oh man, there goes Seagull like cracking every and everybody in the in the room is like laughing really hard. And then they're like, "What are we having for dinner?" And he's like, "Subs, subs, we're having subs because it's like just, a Navy movie." And yeah, they're all like everybody's like <laughs> celebrating how funny he is. That's how I felt about the Virgin Lizard uh, line. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, check it, check that show out by the way, the, re, the rewatchables with Bill right. Simmons. This dude's a genius. It's super funny. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, number two. <laughs> This is like worms. Things only 200 miles off the eastern American seaboard. We don't even know what the hell it is. It's the Ropa de Allosaurus. What? Some type of enormous reptile that we believe died out in the Cretaceous period. So where's it been hiding the last 60 million years? What about the traces of radiation? The radiation isn't an anomaly. It's the clue. This animal is much too big to be some kind of lost dinosaur. Well, don't tell me what it is and tell me what the hell it is. Well, what do we know? Uh, it was first sighted off of the French Polynesian Pacific, right? That area has been exposed to dozens of nuclear tests over the past 30 years. Uh-huh, hence the radiation. No, more than that. I believe that this is a mutated aberration. A hybrid caused by the fallout on these islands. Uh-huh, like your earthworms? Yes, yes. We're looking at a completely incipient creature. The dawn of a new species. The first of its kind. He just Could that have like been he... in, in worse acting, too? Go ahead, Rob. I think that's where he you're just, going. He just talks like he's like narrating Goodnight Moon the entire time. <laughs> like, yeah. In the great green quiet room, old lady. <laughs> there was a telephone and a red balloon. Like, the quiet what? old lady whispering yeah. hush. And nobody. And mush. Um... Ugh. Yeah, the, the the Allosaurus that died out during the Cretaceous period is back, and he's and then I guess Broderick agrees, but disagrees, saying it's a mutated apparition. Yes. And then she's like, "Oh, you like your earthworms?" He's like, "Yes, yes." And then completely creature. ignoring the fact that she's being facetious because she thinks he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. Uh, that's just junk science bullshit. You know, I hate yeah. it. Um, but here is the number one. I want to see if you guys uh, feel the same way about this, or if I'm a complete idiot and I'm reading this wrong. This uh, number one, Daddy, is you know what? Fuck it. No other island. Yes, sir, anyone from the mayor's office? Yes, sir. They've agreed to evacuate the city. They called out the national guard. Wait, evacuate Manhattan? That's over three million people. Has that ever been done before? I don't think so. Where is he now? We, uh, we lost sight of it, sir. You want to run that by me again? Uh, after its initial at attack, he, uh, disappeared. Secretary of Defense Burke is on the line. I don't understand. How could something so big just disappear? Well, 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 we're not sure, but we're, yeah, we're yeah. standing here now. Yeah, yeah. He probably returned to the river. Well, I don't think so. I mean, look at it. It's perfect. An island, water on all sides. But like no other island in the world, this is a place where he can easily hide. He's in there rhymes. someplace. Channel 12, quarter on take. <laughs> sides and I... hide. Yeah, all right. I just don't understand. He can easily hide because there's buildings or because there's water on all other sides, like no other island in the world. <laughs> am I reading this wrong? Is it really that bad? Or am I am I just I think he can't what, hide in buildings. I think what he meant to say because like it's more like a lake within the island, right? Because like it's surrounded as it's, it's a nice little hole, a little hidey hole. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like at this point, they didn't know that he was in the subways and stuff, right? Because yeah. he shouldn't be able to just squeeze into a subway entrance, being a like seventy foot tall Allosaurus or whatever the fuck he is. Yeah, right. So it seems like to me, like Doctor Nicholas, uh, you know, whatever 
whatever his last name is that they keep making the joke because yeah. it's like Greek or something. Um, I think that he is suggesting that he can easily hide because there's waters on there's water on all sides of New York, so he can just yeah. get in there and hide in the water. Yeah. I, maybe I, maybe there's something I'm not thinking of, but it's it's a uh, anyway. I'm just gonna before I get really upset, I'm gonna throw it to test number five, the worst production. Oh my god! When a studio puts out a production this bad, they're dead meat. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so I'm starting to regret that I gave Rob those clips. I should have like <laughs> used them first. Well, we're like halfway through the season. There's only like four or five more episodes of that. <laughs> I thought seasons were like 95 episodes. Yeah, oh like yeah, good point. Good point. Okay, so worst production. I stole my tagline uh, from Ooh. quote that is going to be in worst production. Took the god out of Godzilla. Took the god out of Godzilla. All right. Yeah. So this was so Toho is a Japanese corporation that mm-hmm. makes movies and entertainment. And they were the ones who originally owned the rights to Godzilla. Yeah. And when they gave America the uh the go ahead to make their own Godzilla movie, uh they they didn't know this was going to happen. So <laughs> <laughs> when the producer and director of the Godzilla Final Wars, which is more recent uh, adaptation, uh, they felt the film took the god out of Godzilla because they portrayed the character like it was just a mere animal. Yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read two quotes now. Or actually, one, three quotes. Okay, first one. It's interesting that the U.S. version of Godzilla runs about trying to escape missiles. Americans seem to uh, be unable to accept. That a creature cannot be put down by their arms. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Okay. And then mm-hmm. uh second one, Toho, uh the that's the company, doesn't regard the ninety eight Godzilla as king of the monsters. And then they finished with it would appear to them he's just a giant lizard. Yeah. So yeah. basically in their movies, Godzilla was just a completely unsinkable creature, like only like Mothra or another yeah. like Mecha Godzilla could like take on yeah. Godzilla. Mecha right. Those, are the, those yeah. are the ones that 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 that, <laughs> that 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 yeah. If you watch the old movies, uh, yeah, Godzilla was literally unbeatable. What is uh, what is the uh, first Godzilla's demise? Is it some some other creature? I think Godzilla just. I don't think it ever dies. I think it just goes into back into hiding. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Toho made the the new one, Godzilla minus one. I think it's like their thirty fourth. And it's or... only in theaters. I, I can't. The only fi- copies I can find are like pirated, like videotaped in a theater. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to bother with that. Yeah. So I'm gonna wait until it comes out on something with streaming. But it's it's yeah. it's on it's on like everyone's top ten list for the mo- for the year. Yeah, and to your point, Bob, like th- there's other lore, like from like what I've read about. Because I'm not like a huge Godzilla. Fa- I don't like you know. It's cool. I just never got like into it. But isn't it supposed to be like representative of like PTSD and like survivor guilt from the A bomb blast and all sorts of like, you know, very nuanced, very real like human emotions that like came about during post World War II era? Like, isn't that there's none of that? Yeah. And I think that's what Godzilla minus one really taps into, which is why it was so successful. Yeah. So, like, it, 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 like, people like were crying at the end of that movie. So. Yeah. We, oh, yeah, I mean, I was crying at the end of this one. I think I was Toho's crying right. at the end of uh, 1990. <laughs> yeah, that YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, how about now we throw it to uh, test number six, the worst acting, so we can get back into some more wonderful clips. Mm, yeah. Do you even know how to act? How can you act like that? Shut up! <laughs> it's the worst <laughs> acting. How could you act like it, that? It, it reminds me of that Vanu Malish song, uh, It's My Life, Whatever I Want to Do. <laughs> Hey, 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 do you know what people are thinking of you? People say I am somewhat mental. They don't know that I am very sentimental. Oh. Uh, Bob, you two should pe- see that. Again. Two people will get that reference in our yeah, entire okay. listener base. It's amazing. Uh, number one. The, the title. It is Godzilla. 
There's no animal in the world that makes footprints like that. Is there? Oh, I told them this is not your field, but they never listen to genius. Nick, this is Elsie Chapman of the National Institute of Paleontology. She's your boss. Oh, uh, those were footprints, right? Yes, they were. Anybody see what made them? Uh, actually, no such uh, luck. Uh, well, it all happened so fast that nobody knew what hit them until it was over. Elsie! Yeah? Tape's in. The French finally released it. Yeah, this is a Japanese cannery ship that was attacked and sunk near French Polynesia. We believe it's connected. By the way, Dr. Craven, have you met the worm guy? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Summer cold. What? Go to Go Yeah, I, I don't know that everyone knows what Godzilla is if it's the first Godzilla in the world, right? So, like, right, yeah. I, I don't know why they show that video. Like, it's uh, some kind of pronouncement, you know? It's like some guy is saying some word I've never heard before. <laughs> All right, like, can someone like tell me what he's talking about? He's talking about a it, band, I think. Well, this is what <laughs> pe people get upset about with movies: is if a if a movie doesn't exist in the universe of the movie we're watching. How can you refer to that movie <clears throat> or vice versa? Yeah, right. That's what they're doing, and that's uh, drove me crazy. But also, so basically, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so the way they tied it in was by ha having Harry Shearer mispronounce it. Like he misheard Gojira right. as Godzilla. Yeah. And she's like, that's yeah. not what it's called. And he's like, oh, you know, gotcha. Yeah, but now, but now we got the uh, title of the movie in the movie. Um, also, the paleontologist lady that I was like pissed about before. Um, mm -hmm. You you just this is one of those instances where I'm gonna say something that sounds maybe uh, dumb or insightful. I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna fire away. When you're uh, a director directing a person to act, and you want them to act like they're thinking of the sentence as they're going, they didn't have it prepared. It's, yeah. it, I think that that's one of those situations where you need someone who's really good, because yeah. when you are acting like you're not sure of what you're about to say, it sounds yeah. like you don't know your line. If you want to hear a good example of that being done, uh, Island of Dr. Moreau, um, uh, what's his mm -hmm. name? Marlon Brando wore an earpiece. You can listen to our episode at www.theworstmovieevermade.com. Hell yeah, nice plug. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that always, it just always sounds bad to me. It's like yeah. when, um, and I've said this before, but like, <clears throat> I think we were um, watching The Dark Knight and it's, uh, was Aaron Eckhart? Um, it actually has a good delivery of the, when when you stop a sentence short because you realize something, yeah. and that's a very hard thing to do. You know, people are like, and then I went to the store and I <gasps> tomatoes. You're a genius, you know. One of those like it never yeah. never comes out right. Uh, that's yeah. I feel the same way about this uh, paleontologist here. Anyway, I digress. Let's throw it to number two. This is report. Can I help you, young man? Yes. Uh, do you have any at-home pregnancy tests, uh, especially <laughs> ones that look for gonadotropic hormones or clomiphene citrate? Oh, why don't you dump this? This. <laughs> this is all we've got. I'll take all of them. Okay. <laughs> wow, you must have quite some harem. Audrey? Oh my God, is it Audrey? Is that you? What are you doing? <laughs> Hi. Hello. Wow, how much is that? $46. God, you, you look... Wow. How have you been? It's good to see you, Nick. So you made it. What? You're a reporter, huh? No, that's good. That's good. That's what you always wanted. I'm, I'm happy for you. Really, I am. Thank you. I had to throw in that little Ugh. wind chime at yeah. the end. Here comes the magic of romance. We're we're forcing you to feel that way. Uh, yeah, that's my biggest problem with this movie. We'll talk about it in the catch all. Sweet, can't wait. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Matthew Broderick. I think you were saying Bobby just kind of phones it in on this one. 
<laughs> quite a few things he's going to be yes that's this is yeah I, I think i think he did not give a shit about this movie maybe he no. read the script he was like i'll take the paycheck but it's probably the same thing as like Steve Buscemi like doing Escape from LA just to, like so he could fund a project he actually wants to do. Yeah, maybe same thing. Well, Broderick, so, so Broderick, Broderick can make said, halls. Broderick said something in an interview on like one of the talk shows about saying why he doesn't understand why there's so much hate for this movie because it made money, and that's all. I guess that's all he cared about. Yeah, well, that 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 bolsters the claim then. Yeah, for sure. Ah. Uh, we've got two more. Uh, this is number. Three. This is how. We were checking the office building above when we discovered the floor was gone. When we discovered that he could burrow his way through the tunnels, we realized that uh, we realized he could be outside the quarantine zone. Holy Christ! How many tunnels lead off the island? Only fourteen, sir. We checked them all. He hasn't used any of them. We have them all sealed up. Yes, sir. How? Uh, how, how, how would we do that, sir? You fill them with cement, <laughs> brick them up, put landmines in them, bombs. I don't care. Make sure the damn thing doesn't leave the island. Yes, sir. You know, he's not some enemy trying to evade you. He's just an animal. What are you suggesting? Well, when I had to catch earthworms, I knew that the best way to get them was not to dig them out, but to draw them out. All we need to do is to find out what he needs, and he'll come to you. That guy, that's the second time, second clip, that that uh, actor playing the, like, first uh, guy to Colonel Hicks goes, oh, no, 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 just extremely bad. I just, I always hate that. Never sounds Matthew, natural. Matthew Broderick's character has this really like annoying quality where like he's an expert in only one field, but he relates everything he knows about that field to <laughs> whatever's that currently yeah. happening. Like he'll 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 be getting like a latte at Starbucks and they'll be like, Well, when I was studying earthworms, I found out that like <laughs> when you aerate cream, it's different on the northern hemisphere than on the southern hemisphere. He's like, just fuck off. No, I agree with you, but we are currently calling the kettle black because of our South Park references in literally every episode. But yeah, but that, <laughs> that's not what we do for our those actually life. those actually relate though. So we're <laughs> we're not in the wrong here, Chris. Fair, fair. All right, fair. <laughs> All right, you want to hear the last clip of the day? Yeah. All right, this one is number. Let's go with Pirate Rob. Four yard. Yard. This is high beam. O'Neill, O'Neill, O'Neill. Nice trick with the cab ID. Where the hell are you? Uh, you have to help us. We're in the um, we're we're in the uh, Park um, Avenue Tunnel. Park, Avenue. Park Avenue Tunnel. Whoa. He's got us trapped in here. Okay, Nick. Listen to me. You guys have got to lure him out into the open so we can get a clear shot at him. Uh, no problem, man. You want us to wash him up for you, too? <laughs> Where's the nearest suspension bridge? Uh, uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn. Let's go. And how would you like us to do that? This thing have high beams? Were high beams a new technology in 1998? <laughs> like, why is he asking <laughs> if a car has a fucking high beam? <laughs> That's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, it's a car. It's a car that was made like somewhat recently. It's got. I'm sure he was being facetious, <laughs> but still, yes. Does this car have seatbelts? Like, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. It I, don't, I don't feel like it would have sounded better shit in the woods kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't think it would have sounded any yeah. worse if he was like, high beams. We'll use the high yeah. beams. Yeah. I don't Mind know. that motherfucker. It, you know? I'm with you. Yeah. Anyway. Bob, we're going to throw it to you. This is fact or no oh. fact. All right. Bob's going to give you a... Bob, you have thought about... In fact or no fact. All right. All right. So fact or no fact is a game where you have to discern fact from fiction. And this one's kind of a unique one uh, because there was really a lot of information about this movie. But a lot mm. of it I've been sprinkling throughout the show. 
This one was an interesting one that I found. That I'm like, I got to include this. So Toho Studios gave the TriStar production crew a 75-page dossier of what they can and cannot do with Godzilla's character. Oh, that's a fact. Got... Oh. Okay. That's okay, a fact. That's a fact. Okay. So that's not the um, This included the following rules. And the following okay, rules oh, is okay. where the fact no fact is. So out of these five things I'm going to read, one of them is made up. The other ones are true. This is okay. great, Bob. I love it. Okay. So here, the first one, Godzilla will only eat fish. <laughs> okay. Right. The second one, no more or less than three toes on his feet and four fingers on his hands. Okay. Okay. Third one, Godzilla cannot be made fun of. Okay. okay. Fourth one, he must have his signature weapon, his distinctive atomic breath. Okay. And the fifth one, he cannot die in the movie. <clears throat> okay, so Bob, now, I have a follow-up. I'm, Go I'm going to say right now, except for it cannot be made fun of, uh, all the other four were broken. <laughs> they didn't, didn't do that was that was my question was did, did they hold true to that because that that makes it one less layer of abstraction to like think yes, about yeah okay no cool. they they blew most of them okay so they basically were given a, a complete comprehensive style guide and just like threw it in the garbage yeah they're like <laughs> eh, we don't think so yeah <laughs> they write it on their hand but they just sweat it off and they're like oh shit fish <laughs> um all right so he'll only eat fish See, see that, that that makes it hard now because he only eats fish in the movie, and if that, hmm, no more, three toes or four fingers, he cannot be made fun of. Must have a signature weapon. Cannot die in the movie. Is there anything about Puff Daddy riding an elevator to the top floor of a skyscraper and erupting into a pile of doves to the tune of Led Zeppelin's Cashmere at any point? In, in that uh, I don't guide? think so. Okay, don't check it. <laughs> Not to my knowledge. All right. Fuck, man, you stumped me. Said the tree to the lumberjack. I am stumped. Um, let's see. Uh... <laughs> Can't be made fun of. I mean, that that is like a thing with like honor. It's like you know the the Japan people. Um, <laughs> the Japan people. Can we clip that? No, what are they called? <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a quarter of a brain cell firing this week. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> the Japanese-Americans. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm just going to stab in the dark here. I, I can't even logic my way through this because, Bob, you're, you're, you're suggesting they presented the style guide with these rules, but in the movie, they didn't follow any of them. So, like, they can all be made up or they can all be true. Like, there's I no know, way, it's tough. There's it's no tough. way to verify or cross-check this shit. There's no way to logic your way through it. Because there's like an extra layer of abstraction here. Um, I'm gonna say Godzilla cannot be made fun of. If that, because like I feel like, like that, that, that's a testament to like honor, you know, like Japanese honor and like pride, um, which so, they have so plenty. Are you saying that's the one lie? Oh, that's no, that's the truth. Fuck, you're right. Oh God. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say I wanna say he cannot die in the movie because I don't know much about Godzilla lore, but there are like 34 of them and he keeps coming back. So I, I would I would have reason to believe that like that's a through line through all the Godzilla movies based on my very limited knowledge. So I'm gonna say no, that's 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 also true though. Then fuck. Um he can only eat fish. Let's go with that. That's a lie. The end. <laughs> I, I I quit. I give up. Okay. Fuck. All right, um, it, Bob, can you can you tell me again how it, how it was phrased about the toes and fingers? Uh, no more or less than three toes on his feet and okay. four so fingers three. on his hands. So he must have three toes. He must have four fingers on each. Yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> That's so interesting. Dang I it, feel Bobby. like that's going to be mine. Damn it, Bob. I, I feel like they did go with the the breath, but they didn't want to because they did make him an animal and he shouldn't be breathing fire. Yeah. Um. So I feel like they that's the one that they held true to despite not wanting to. Um. Hmm. I. I'm between two and three, and I'm gonna go. 
with three. I'm going to say that he cannot be made fun of is a lie. That's the one I thought was a lie, but that's actually true. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they yeah. said he cannot be made fun of, and that's the only one they kind of held true to because they really didn't make fun of him. No, nah, they had that virgin lizard jab. Remember that, Bob? That's, yeah, that, that's <laughs> yeah, true. that's true. They, they kind of did. Really what is this, the yeah. virgin lizard? Um, he he. They and, said he must only eat fish, and he did try to eat them in the car. If you don't remember, yes, I do. Uh, and all the baby Godzillas ate all those guys. Oh yeah. Uh, mm. So anyway, that was on the that was in the dossier. Uh, the and three popcorn. toes and the three toes and four fingers exactly uh, were also in the dossier. And okay. I watched the film several takes, and Godzilla has a fourth toe in the back in the movie. Oh. Um, yeah. Like a, uh, like a thumb claw like a dog has? Yes, exactly. Oh. And uh, yes, they said he cannot die in the movie. So he must have a signature weapon. The distinctive atomic breath was not in the dossier. Wow. Although they did... I wouldn't say they mentioned it, but it was mentioned in like reviews that that was a a signature thing that all Godzilla movies have, and and I noticed he didn't have that. He did. I could hear the mechanical keyboard still whirring in the background. <laughs> but he definitely way, blew fire down that one uh, one street in New York. Well, he he blew fire from the fire that already existed. Like he like oh, he was just like redirecting fuel. it with his wind. Oh, yeah. okay. Because yeah. yeah, I thought it was really lame. I was like, of course. He's Either way, that right was here. not in the dossier. That wasn't. That's in there. It's gonna they ruin my catch-all point. Damn it! All right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, all right. That was super fun. So the the lie was the signature weapon breath. Yes. Signature. Can that go in the write-up? Yep. <laughs> way ahead of you. Sick. All right. Uh, when you're done with that, throw it to our bumper for the catch-all, if you don't mind. Pretty please. Yeah, you got it. Uh, da, 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 catch-all. Oh, my God! It appears that we've caught everything. Oh, my God! It's all over. Oh, my God! It's all over. Oh, my God! Uh, should I go first, since I'm going to have 70 of them, yeah. and you guys have, like, 20 Yes. Bucks? Okay. Yeah. I do love footage of giant explosions. Like in the beginning, I was like, it's cool to just see huge, like, explosions. It just doesn't. Yeah, I agree. I'm not giving them credit for it, I guess. Because it's, it's stock footage of, you know, giant bombs exploding. Yeah. But it's so cool. Ruining the lives of millions of people. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah. French Polynesian fishermen, anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know, I didn't notice until I started doing this show with you guys how 90s some movies look. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the the rapid fire introductions on the scene of the uh, uh, when Matthew Broderick first gets there, like this yeah. is our paleontologist. She's like, oh, da, 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 da. like it's like the the back and forth, the quick, <laughs> yeah. like, rehearsed banter. Yeah, the really good 90s, girls. really mm -hmm. annoying. Yeah, All I right. agree. Um, I kind of jump around on these, so sorry if I step on any of your toes, but they, they very loosely made Matthew Broderick's character uh, Papatopoulos or Topopoulos. Like, that was a funny joke, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah a ve very loose, oh, fuck, he's good trope. Because True. I, don't, I, I don't know if you know people that have like PhDs or like multiple degrees in like very specialized fields. They're no. only really smart with that one thing. Like, they can't fucking boil water, dude. Like they're not like they spend <laughs> their entire adult life thinking about like a couple things and like researching right. it. But like he's in a taxi cab. And he's like, I'm, oh, if I throw the badge ID to this one specific guy as I pass him, he'll be able to locate us because there's a directory. Like you don't know that. Yeah. You study worms all your life, and then, <laughs> and then like he's like, where's the nearest suspension bridge? Like he had a plan immediately. Yes. All of a sudden he was like this action hero who was fucking great, at, like, who knew everything. He had anticipated every need. But like you're just a worm scientist, man. You don't you don't yeah. know any of this shit. Yeah, that I agree. And that's the this suspension bridge plan was so dumb too. Yeah, it works, but it's it's so dumb. Uh, <clears throat> my next is a uh, one of two Jaws ripoff moments, but the big one for me was when they do the bolt pull. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, there's like three boats out in the water and then it's like unbelievable how powerful he is because he's pulling the boats like underwater. Yeah. It's a it's just a Jaws ripoff. True, it is. Uh it's really white cast. I noticed. Very white cast. Yeah. Very white. Aggressively white. aggressively white. Aggressively Couldn't agree white. more. Yeah. All right. That's it. Um did anybody else feel like the the mayor portrayed by Michael Lerner just kind of felt like a cross between Rodney Dangerfield and Newman from Seinfeld? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt bit. exactly that way. Okay. <laughs> it is rough out there, I tell you. <laughs> this, this this mayoral campaign is rough, and I got no respect. I felt like it was Randy Newman mixed with Newman from Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, also that. <laughs> Um, God's, uh, I, I, here's another, uh, Godzilla in the water problem for me that maybe the single most idiotic moment of the entire movie is when Godzilla took bait from a hook. <laughs> yeah. Guy's out fishing. Yeah. He yeah. throws his line out. He must've thrown it a quarter mile into the fucking Harbor yeah. because his line gets taken by Godzilla, who is clearly way, way out in the water. You know, like he he d- yeah. d- d- takes the. It's not that there was like a really fast fish that just took the old guy's like pole. Yeah, Godzilla ate the worm that he threw into the water or whatever. What if he did the thing right. that like Squidward did the first time he ever ate a Krabby Patty, where like like his lips went out really far to like. <laughs> I did not think about what it looked like underwater, <laughs> like how how he like daintily <laughs> <clears throat> grabbed the like night crawler or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, are, are you guys familiar with the filmmaking uh, t- t- trick of the dolly zoom? Yeah. So, like in Jaws. When, when, yes, when the Jaws. Yeah, first, that's the other yeah, ripoff I have on my catch-all. They use that way too much. Yeah. In my yeah. opinion. But I guess yeah. that's what they do. But still, I didn't like it. It was, it was uh, definitely made famous in Jaws, for sure. Okay, so if, in theory, a human pregnancy test that normally needs urine to verify pregnancy oh, can I'm be sorry. used, is able to use um, blood, following yeah. that logic, couldn't he just buy a human abortion pill and just like throw it in the fish that he was eating and then just like murder all his <laughs> eggs with plan B? Theoretically speaking, yes. I'm just saying. <laughs> Third act is just Godzilla with tummy ache, just queefing out a bunch of eggs into the toilet. Dude. <laughs> you are fucked up in the head, Rob. <laughs> Please review that tomorrow okay. and then seek a, a conversation with a specialist. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, to get us back on track here. Yeah, they showed no. the monster too early in my in my opinion. Um, yeah. This is something that they didn't steal from Jaws that they should have. Immediately, we see the giant monster dinosaur, and I think yeah. they should have held off so that we felt some sense of tension and fear, especially you know? for this during this era of CGI, like not quite being yeah. perfected. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. Was or wasn't the city evacuated? Like there were crowded right. bars showing the news. There was the pharmacy open. Like literally, like that'll be forty six dollars, sir. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. she just stayed on her shift. They didn't either think didn't think this through, or we're just no. so used to living through a pandemic. We actually know what a shutdown looks like. Mm, <laughs> all right, true. There, um, Bob. I'm actually I'm gonna go out of order and piggyback off what you just said. Um. They made a reference to, like, they haven't seen this kind of devastation since, like, the 1993 World Trade Center bombing where, like, you know, 12 people were injured. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I thought <laughs> this, about that. Yeah. Too. And, like, you know, three years later, that, that <laughs> thing happened where <laughs> that kind of uh, doesn't really age the reference very well, you know. No. No, not exactly. too well. As as Norm MacDonald said, I don't like talking about it. It reminds me of that tragedy. Um, that whole thing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. I did have on the next uh, the towers with a sad face, but I, I won't go into it. Uh, so a uh, pure bullshit shock attempt with the MetLife building hole. MetLife building hole. <laughs> Are we to believe that Godzilla that? was at a? 
A, uh, okay. Pure bullshit shock attempt with the MetLife building hole. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, are we to believe that Godzilla was at a full sprint and decided to jump through a building instead of go around it or jump on it like he does uh, yeah. numerous times? <clears throat> Like I think it, that's why I'm calling it a bullshit shock attempt is because we're supposed to see the MetLife building with a big hole in it and think, like, what would that do to us? Like, if we actually saw that in real life, you know? Right. Yeah. But what does that mean that Godzilla did? Like, he just went, like, like did a dive right through the center of it? Yeah. Like, put his hands up like this and just... <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Streamline. Um, so there was that one scene when Hank Azaria follows Matthew Broderick to like that warehouse where the French are. Yeah. And he's like up in this like broken window, like way up high and far away from everybody. And he apparently hears every word they said. I think that was just bullshit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolute horseshit. Good point. Um, so, uh, my, one of my day gigs, uh, I write about movie stuff and a lot of times when I, when I watch movies for the show, I pitch op ed pieces on the movie just so I could like have fun riffing on it. And the thesis I came up with is this is not Godzilla or a monster movie with a rom-com backdrop. This is a rom-com with Godzilla in the background. Yeah. If it's yeah. even Godzilla. <laughs> and I have a few more points app that I'll circle back to um, based on that. <clears throat> I'm just shocked that they couldn't, the French guys couldn't find a croissant in New York. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. With the, with the <laughs> intel they have. Yeah. So right. New, York, New York City is huge. Getting place to place, this we've had this in many movies. Would would take way longer than they took. Like they were able to like zip from place to place pretty damn quick. That's true. And get cement trucks really fast when they needed them. All right. Quicker. Yeah. Um, going back to the rom com through line, he's in where uh Ukraine. He's in Ukraine near uh, Chernobyl. Yeah, just Chernobyl. Yeah. He opens up his briefcase or his research little, you know, his little attaché or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got pictures of his ex-girlfriend who we don't know her significance at that time. Right. They've been broken up for 4 years. He's creepy. Yeah, they've been broken yeah. up for 4 4 years. That's the main <laughs> love interest. It's like she didn't leave him at the altar necessarily, but like he asked her to marry him and then she dumped him and then like broke off all contact and he's yeah. just sitting there with like a handful of wiggly worms just like, "Oh." <laughs> Audrey, or whatever the fuck her name is. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, what are you What are you suggesting he's doing with a handful of worms? Uh, I'm not even suggesting anything. I'm just saying like, it's a weird like. Wiggly it's all worms. consuming. Yeah, know? I thought the I thought the suggestion after you went wiggly worms and then you went oh no no, no he's not edging or anything <laughs> like that like we were talking about earlier but uh, no it's just it's just weird it's just weird like that that's all consuming like pre that's like preoccupying like real estate in your brain over something that's long gone. It's yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is weird. I agree. Are you guys ready for the uh, movie recasting I'm doing? Oh, God. Yeah. Okay, so this is, I will admit, kind of a ripoff of the the rewatchable. So there you go, Alan, or whatever your name is. You you got me. Yeah. Um, they do a recasting. And, and um, that's for every movie, though. And I've never done this on the show. And it just... I just felt like this movie was cast wrong. I don't know if you guys agree, but um, here's who I recast in the uh, six major spots. Number one, Dr. Nick. Rob, you're going to like this one. Instead of Matthew Broderick, I went with John Cusack. That'd work. Okay. As Better. bad as that, as bad as 2012 was, John Cusack, like, he did commit to the bit. I think, I think he would have been much better here. With the, um, he's like nerdy, but like good looking would have helped. He's a little bit more manly. I think he would he have could, just sold it a little more. He could be aggressive when he needs to. Um, he, yeah, he, he I, had, he do, he's done dramas <clears throat> and like not like yeah. quirky thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm keeping, uh, Renault as, uh, Philip Roach though, cause he's, he is French and that's right. the part you want, you know. Um, Maria Patillo, Patillo? Uh, as Audrey, right? I'm okay. thinking Meg Ryan. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan. 
Okay. Who do you got? Plus, she's too old. Bigamini? Yeah. She, well, she would she would have been um like four or five years older than Cusack at this point. So oh. I thought it could work. Animal. Uh, that uh, Hank Azaria's Azaria. uh, Victor Pelodi. Oh, no, I can't do it then. I, I wanted Dougie Doug. <laughs> I, guess with, I guess with a last name like that. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't work, but but uh, I thought Dougie Doug would be fucking awesome in that in that spot. See, I didn't have a problem um, with Zaria because 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 like they, they were going for cartoonish elements and he's a cartoon voice actor. And I feel like yeah. he he delivered exactly what they are looking for in this context. I just didn't buy him as like a tough street um, like New Yorker. Every time he had yeah. like, oh, you know, I'm eating like here. fucking bagels, you know, like I just didn't believe him. I ride a pizza to work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Colonel Hicks, who I, I, I'm just not a Kevin Dunn guy, uh, the, right. the fellow who played uh, Colonel Hicks. Anytime I see him, I just don't believe him. Um, yeah. let's get Tommy Lee Jones there to delegate. There Ooh. we go. Yes. Let's do that, yes. right? And then, uh, M M Mayor Ebert, instead of being a learner, I, I want Harvey Keitel with that New York accent. Imagine him as the mayor of New York, that would have been fucking amazing, I think. That's what yeah. I have. Uh, not a fan of Meg Ryan, apparently. I don't know who yeah. you're gonna go with. Cameron Diaz, who was who was available in '98. Julia Roberts. Um, I thought we were doing, doing dream much. casting. I didn't think we were doing uh, Heather yeah, Graham think... from Austin Powers fame. Uh, Heather, Heather Graham, Graham, maybe. Yeah. I would go Heather Graham or Cameron Diaz. Yes, either one of those. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I I, I guess if it, if if uh, it is a true fantasy draft, I wouldn't be fantasy drafting Meg Ryan, I'd be doing Cam Cameron Diaz probably. I'd be doing Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Oh yeah. Margot Robbie. We'll talk about her later actually. Our creepiness emerges. Uh, we, all went, we all simultaneously I had, went, uh. I had a handful of earthworms just now. <laughs> and a feather in my other hand. Yes. <laughs> all right, Bob, your turn. Listening to you two. <laughs> okay. So I I've I've learned this over the years. CGI works better in the dark or the rain, which is why yes. the big creature was so much more convincing than the uh I I coined them as toddler zillas. Because if you didn't notice, yeah. the to the toddler zillas were very cheap and, and fake looking because they yes. were indoors yeah. in like artificial lighting. Uh, whereas all the Godzilla shots were outdoors in the dark and in the rain. Yeah, definitely yeah. looked better. Agreed. Um, just filmic time in general. How 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 long does it take you to fly from Ukraine to New York City? Zero jet lag. Just get straight into action. They're trying to race Godzilla from all these different vantage points to its destination, <laughs> yeah. and they just get to fucking work immediately. That just bothered me. Like, no, you're yeah. gonna sleep for twelve hours at least. Uh, like, you know, you're gonna be I like think, a. I think like, you might, yeah. Like a reverse red. You're going from you're going east to so you're going on a reverse red eye, essentially, <laughs> at right. zero notice with no like luggage. I think a reverse red eye should be in the write up too. <laughs> reverse, yeah. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Yes. Anyway. Uh, is it me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you remember when uh, Dr. Nick suggests that they take the manhole covers off so that Godzilla yeah. can smell the fish? Yeah. yeah. He runs up ahead, and it's so a trophy. He just, he, he's alone now, not with all the soldiers that are... There's five you know military people taking off manholes, each manhole, and he runs up ahead to, to clear his own manhole. And, of course... That's the one that Godzilla is under. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you said clear his own manhole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, this is a we haven't had a sexual podcast yeah. this uh, horny since uh, <laughs> porn water. I want to say. Yeah. Was that ice room. pirates? Yeah. That was <laughs> ice pirates. Yeah. Ice pirates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Clear his own manhole. Mm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the entire the entire chase scene at the end was unreal, over the top, even for a disaster movie. I just thought, yeah, thought it was way too much to swallow, even for Godzilla. Yeah. Um, if Matthew Broderick, if Doctor Nick was right about everything this whole time, 
and he's like, he's going to have a dozen eggs. How come they made him wrong about how many eggs there were? Of all yeah, the things. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, fair. I guess, I guess like it doubles down and proves that he was like extra right, but like not really because that's a <laughs> order of, no, that's like orders of magnitudes off from his predictions. It was. Yeah. How many eggs was it? 200? 200. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. That's like 20. Um, gold. Well, Bob, this is where I wrote another Jaws ripoff of the background focus shot steal, but uh, I'll skip that. Uh, why doesn't Godzilla look like Godzilla? Rob, you kind of said this already, but yeah, it doesn't even look like an Allosaurus. Like they just came up with new concept art completely, and I don't understand why they did that. They did. They, they there were more things in that list that I didn't read that they actually did do. Like there were supposed to be three rows of plates on his back, and there were. Um, mm -hmm. I forget. There were supposed to be so many rows of teeth, and they were, but. Yeah, they really did totally redesign. Godzilla. I hated the mouth. It looked like 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 a frog with sharp teeth. You yeah, know? Yeah. Like the mouth was totally weird. It was. Yeah. Um it's my last one. Oh god. Uh, so the, uh <laughs> the, it, it was apparently barely any movement to destroy buildings, like they can leap right through buildings. But apparently yep. they got and also they they they, they ripped through streets and earth to get to the subway system. But right. apparently getting tangled in a suspension bridge <laughs> was pretty <laughs> much <laughs> and yeah. and the missiles actually penetrate. <laughs> like yeah that, somehow none of, the, none of that made sense. No. Agreed. I I'm gonna end with this one just to piggyback off you Bob. Like maybe they, they're going like turtle logic like once it falls on its back, no matter like how powerful of a creature it may be, it's just kind of stuck. <laughs> And it's got a soft Maybe. belly or something. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I, I've given up on this movie. It should have been it should have been like 80 minutes long and about Godzilla and not like all the other stuff and the end. It's it's funny because I thought um it was breathing fire, so my next one doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But I you guys uh Bob, did you ever watch Doug the the cartoon? No. <sighs> okay, so <sighs> Rob definitely did, I know for sure. Yeah, I remember the abnormal. Do you remember Silver uh, Skeeter? Silver Skeeter, yeah. So Doug is like Quail Man, and he's just an intelligent superhero. And his best friend comes up with a superhero as well called Super Silver Skeeter, and it's like the Superman problem, where like he's got everything. Like they're they're writing a story together, and Silver Skeeter has uh, an ability for every problem. And I felt yeah. that way when I saw the fire breath that I thought was fire breath. Like, oh, Godzilla's <laughs> got that too. You know, it's super lame, but yeah. it, that I guess that goes out the window. So. Locked on, says the uh, helicopter pilot who like shoots missiles. Everybody's got the dinosaur locked on, but it just moves yeah. out of the way. And yeah. then they destroy the Chrysler building. I just think it's funny. Like, what does locked on mean then? Like, I exactly. yeah, the target's in my sight. I thought locked on meant like I have the heat signature and these things are going to go fucking right. hit. That locked thing. on, right. Yeah. And, and you think they would have noticed that it, it could not be heat tracked when they first used their thermal like alignment system to lock onto the target so they, right it, it, so using the logic it was warm when they locked on and then it got cold <laughs> i don't know maybe it's like the pregnancy thing it's like you know oh uh, like hot like, flashes there's, there's, yeah there's shivers yeah. Yeah. uh giant eyeball trope yeah who cares about what's yeah. on the tape honestly who cares about what's on the fucking tape there's a super yeah. dinosaur tearing new york city apart yeah. Why do we care where it came from and whether it got, uh, or not a Japanese guy is saying Godzilla? Like, I, yeah. I don't understand why that was uh, top secret information and why it matters yeah. that it leaked. Everybody's like, oh my God, the tape leaked. Can you believe it? It's like, do, like no one knows there's a fucking dinosaur in New York right now. Yeah. Right. Like, I just it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Uh, couldn't Godzilla just be a girl or did they see a big ding dong on it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh anyway. That's a good point. <laughs> I I thought it was I actually liked the uh the line when John Renault says that the chewing gum makes them look more American. I thought that was funny. I, I thought it might yeah. also be ripped from somewhere else, but I haven't seen the movie that said that first. Yeah. Uh Animal and Audrey sneak back into the city to follow Nick. They're sneaking back into the city. Is it, it, it to your point, Bob? Is it evacuated? I don't even know because there's like a lady selling groceries. Um, and did they, uh, how did they know where, uh, 
Dr. Nick was going and, and how to find him. New York's kind of ad- big. Because their agenda is to inadvertently ruin his life every single step of the way. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, wouldn't the entire military descend on the monster? It feels like there's like one like little division fighting. Yeah. Right. Uh, the number of times they missed is comical. Yeah. At yeah. a certain point. Um, how does so much happen so boringly? Yeah. I don't know. Cause I was bored. Um, animal said, oh, he trashed the garden. Now I'm pissed. That was one of those lines that the Hank Azaria like shouldn't. I had, have been se- I had season tickets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's so bad. I don't know. Uh, that trope. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um, why are the fish still squirming? Like they've been out of water for a long fucking time. Because it was the take department 30... should have thought about that, I think. It was take 37, and that was like their fourth batch of fish. And there was a late <laughs> production day. They are going into Union Gold time. Like, just just kill another barrel. You just think Travolta double... gave them a couple of prop dogs? Too? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh the baby dinos could just get out through the giant hole. Yeah, like hole. John Renault's like lock the doors so they can't get out of Madison Square Garden. There's a huge hole that they know about. Yeah, yeah. or they should. Um, awful wrong floor joke from uh, Doctor Nick. Yeah. Like the uh, elevator opens, so there's a bunch of dinosaurs, and he's like, oh, "Wrong yeah. floor." Uh, <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah. Um, how do we know that they're born pregnant? That wasn't explained. Be- um, the answer is be- because. Extremely long gestation period, then. Yeah. Uh, how long does it take for them to f- fully mature? I mean, it's all in the same. Anyway, I've got more. So, too many death defying stunts. Yep. The taxi can Ollie. Yep. Yeah. Um, the mayor's assistant quits. He had like two lines in the entire movie. So, why do we give a fuck? Yeah, we don't care. We're supposed to be like, yeah, yeah, it's about time you got out of there. You're being treated so poorly. And then uh, same lack of character development. This is my last one is uh, when the colonel goes, one hell of a job, soldier. One hell of a job. And we just don't give a fuck at all. Like, you know, we're supposed to be like, oh, he finally got his uh, credit from the colonel. But like, we don't care at all. So it it just fell so flat. That's all I've got. You want to throw it to what we're watching? Yeah. Yeah. I got a letter for you. A letter? Yeah, it's a letter that talks about all the things we're watching now. Here. Give me the letter. Give me, give me the damn letter now. Give me the letter. Give me the letter now. Give me the letter. Give me the letter. Now. Give me the letter. Now. Oh, try again. now. <laughs> Who's going first? Or Chris, I'll go. Chris, did you watch the movie we talked about earlier this week or no? I wasn't able watching? to, no. Okay. I, I sincerely apologize. Uh, it's all good. Um, so I'll go first then because because we'll go in the same uh, order. Fra- R- Fraser reruns. Uh, that's what I'm watching right now. Specifically, uh, d- have you seen the one uh, called Dog Army? Or I, actually, I don't think it's called Dog Army. Uh, that's what it said when I googled because I wanted to watch it. It's the one where Martin uh, gets really high and he comes up with fridge pants. Oh, high and, like, holidays! Putting... Uh, season eleven, episode four. Oh, okay. I thought it was eleven eleven, but you're you're probably right. <laughs> it might be eleven. Um, it was called it was called Dog Army uh, when I googled it, and then I looked up the Ar- Dog Army, and it didn't come up. So I think you're right. I think it was. It is eleven eleven. eleven. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, but yeah, Martin's like, I've got all these great ideas. He, Martin doesn't know he's high, and my uh, Niles thinks he is high, but Niles is doing the thing where he's like convincing himself that he is, and Martin's not sure what's going on with him, but. Frazier yeah. comes in and uh, and Marty's like, "Oh my god, I've got all these great ideas," and then he like he he's like fridge pants. Frazier is like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, he pulls out a p- <laughs> no no he that I, I I fucked up the joke, but fridge pants was the joke and it's super funny and fucking watch yeah. Frazier if you don't because it's great. That's one of the most accurate depictions of someone being like high for the first time too. It's like yeah. it's not over the it's not like in Harold and Kumar when like they're like in a pinball machine, like they're tripping on like hallucinogens. It's like, no, he's just like he's having these wild ideas. He's got the munchies, he's just like his hair's all frazzled, he has no idea yeah. what's going on. And he's yeah. just like a, himself, but more animated and a little more unhinged. It's great. Yeah. 
such a good episode. Anyway, that's my first. Bob, Rob, are you doing the 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 movie? I'm. Gonna, I'll touch on it. Yeah. Okay, you do that, and I'll do something different. All right. So, um, dream scenario: Nicolas Cage. It's an A24 film, which like they have a reputation for being like just like let's make weird movies about trauma bonding. I guess is like their whole yeah thing lately. They're but, good. Um, it's it. Uh, Bob was referencing other. I'll let him speak to that, but um. It was referencing, like you know, like being John Malkovich an adaptation. You said right, Bob, and um, yeah, mm-hmm. I I haven't seen those as an adult. Like I saw them like when they came out, like not like really passively watching them, you know. But um, yeah, it was just cool. Nicholas Cage is like showing up in people's dreams, but he's like he's a nobody, and he's like really like uh, a really uneventful, unremarkable person. And in everybody's dreams, he's just also being unremarkable and uneventful until a very, very awkward scene where he tries living out some girl's sexual <laughs> fantasy about him. And then he farts on her couch and prematurely ejaculates and then leaves in humiliation. <laughs> and then all of wow. a sudden he's murdering everybody in their dreams. And like, they're all like tr- truly traumatized about it to the point where like his whole life unravels. And he's just like, well, I didn't do anything. You know, it was a cool, like a uh, commentary on like overnight online sensations who like make one misstep and then like their entire lives are just ruined forever. So yeah. it was pretty cool. And it was really like, surreal. Yeah, yeah. It was like a really surreal, like, dr- the whole movie was very dreamlike. And then they kind of failed to stick the landing in the third act, but it was still, like, a worthy enough ride to, like, deserve its... It's got, like, a 92 on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's deserving of that score, but it, I feel like it didn't quite stick the landing. I think Bob also agrees with me on that. Did, did it get a little worm-fisted by the third act? Yes. <laughs> worm-fisted. <laughs> worm-fisted. <laughs> and then worm. spaced. I also want, I'm starting to watch Space again. It's Simon Pegg and what's the director's name? Um, Edgar Wright. It's like pre Shaun of the Dead, like roommate sitcom that had like yeah. two seasons. Mm. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I might check that out. Bob? Yeah. yeah. Uh, dream scenario. I'm just going to say I've seen eight movies that were released in 2023, which is probably a record for me in like being up to date on movies. And two of them starred Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was, it was Renfield and this one. I saw and Renfield. One, I didn't think it was one, that bad. Yeah, this one was a better film, though. Uh, Renfield, it, it lost me with the overdone CGI effects. Yes. Um, yeah. But I, in my fun, opinion, though. this this just tried to be something that it never achieved, uh, which is a psychological dramedy, which is what I'm calling this. Yeah, that's fair. Dream scenario. and uh, I like that. But the the, the movie that, <laughs> that I, I watched recently that Okay, my daughter is 20 years old. I watched She's it. Like, well, oh, me and my friends are watching this movie called Saltburn. Did you oh, watch right. Saltburn? Yeah, never mind. No, no, I watched Barbie. I thought that's where you were going. No, no. Okay. She said, watch the movie <laughs> called Saltburn. And uh, uh, you should watch it. I'm like, okay, I'll watch it. So I watched it the same night they did it, but not with them. And God damn, thank God I did not watch it with them. <laughs> it yeah. Wow, it was, really? It was so vile at times, yet beautifully shot. Like, it's. It's one of those things where the story is incredible, but I would never recommend anyone seeing it. Um, okay. It's like the this queasy? boy. Ugh, at least, yeah. yeah. Wow. There's a, there's a, a boy at Oxford University befriends a popular wealthy guy and is invited to his house for the summer, but it's not a house. It's like a freaking um, estate, like castle yeah. in like right. uh, uh, rural England. Um anything else i'll say i'll give away the story but i'll just say it has twists and turns that make it a very difficult watch okay Heard. um but it was brilliant it was brilliant the uh barbie movie by the way was not as bad as i thought it would be i be actually, i really i really enjoyed that yeah it was kind of fun i said that about redfield too let me try to find a different way to i i i think that it was a little much uh and a little confused but Overall, it was funnier than I thought it would be. It was yeah. uh, pretty well acted, it was. and it's Margot Robbie. Yeah, and it it blatantly celebrates all the things it's vilifying at the same time. So like, it's it's yeah. just like you need to watch it. I only saw it once, but I feel like that warrants repeat watches just to unpack like every layer of meta humor. That's yeah, in it. yeah, it's, it's definitely layered for sure. And, but what's weird is Ryan Gosling looks like one of my good friends, uh, my friend Tim. Yeah, I was about to say or Tim. Like Tim. Yeah, they they look like pretty identical it's weird yeah anyway uh that's what we're watching 
Uh, do you guys want to throw it to the offensive minigame or uh, back it? Let's, let's do the minigame. If you can say... My mother was Korean. And also... And my father was black American. You may be part of our offensive minigame. Salacious Santa or pick up in a pickup? Um... Um... Santa. Yeah, I'm gonna go Santa too. I agree. You know, heavy set, high top hilarity or Mr. French funnies. Mr. French funnies. Yeah, only I because agree. I felt like I felt like they made make they felt like making Frenchy like the stereotypical Russian. I don't know. For some reason, he, I know he had a French accent, but I was like, it almost sounded like a Russian accent by proxy. Like in Russia, we do it this way. And I feel like that's like an overused thing in the 90s, so that offended me. Fair. Yeah. Uh, regrettable recasting or R word? R word. R word. Yeah, Rob. <laughs> I, well, I was about to say because re- regrettable recasting. I was scared for you. Is, <laughs> they, 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 they both began with R, so I was like, which R word are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I couldn't think of the singer um, quickly enough. Yeah, got you. Uh, okay, so we have that uh, jotted down. We know who wins that category, so let's go to bad credit names for fun. Jeff, this is my friend John. Oh, Jeff, heard a lot of good things about you. Where'd you find this son of a bitch? He's a friend of mine from school. A friend? Jeff, Don. Oh, Jeff, oh, Jeff. Don. Jeff, how can you oh, act Jeff, like oh, that? Jeff. Shut up! Back credit names. What do we got? Uh, we have uh, a returning Zoltan. Okay. You guys remember Zoltan? Uh, he's a makeup artist. Mick Cucker's also making a return visit. Mick Cucker. Oh, that's a name. <laughs> and I love this one. There's a Bill Zane. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sucks. Um, Breezy Brooks sounds okay. like a retirement home. Yeah. Uh, Stony Westmoreland. <laughs> okay. Wow. Stony Westmoreland. Uh, Sebastian Schwipper. Kind of fun. Yeah. Woody Wolf. Ew. Okay. Milady Dijon Baptiste. Oh. Oh wow. I don't know which one of these two is better. Like, none of them are like dick jokes, really, except for I guess you could have gone with Woody Wolf, but um, Robert Numbers. Ew. Yeah, Numbers is kind of a crazy last name. And, and I, I don't know why, but this was my favorite. Walter Newt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like Walter it. Newt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's throw it to the comparison. Okay. Oh my God! It's time to compare the movie. Something we haven't done oh yet. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. Oh shit. Sorry. I uh went okay. to our live look in. Yeah. That's that's what I was doing there, and uh it just played a video on Instagram. You were so watching sorry. thirst traps, just just a Yeah, I sure was. I'm sending it to you right now though. <laughs> Uh, boop, 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 boop. just so you guys can see, I want to see your reactions. I'm sending you the live look. All right, uh, <clears throat> all right, Christmas Story 2 and Godzilla. We have oh. worst of its kind, a negative 70.4 and worst, uh, for Christmas Story 2, and negative 52 and worst for Godzilla. So that is a win for Christmas Story 2. No surprise there. Pitch Bob, you had a five star last week. I had a 4.5, so despite how great I was this week, you do edge me out. Edge <laughs> me out this week. Um, the offensive minigame, uh, Godzilla is the winner, we just determined. How about dialogue? Christmas Story was worse by... Christmas Story was worse. Every A mile. Every metric. I agree. Uh, production, face palm slapstick, or... Took the god out of Godzilla. Faith I mean, slapstick. taking the god out of Godzilla is uh, offensive to the creation of Godzilla, but um, I, I know that's not an offensive test. But right. um, 
the other one just made the movie so shitty. Face palm yeah. slaps it. Yeah, I agree. I think. Um, uh, unanimous again. How about acting? I'm gonna have to go Christmas Story too. Also. Yep, I agree. I, yep. I just it. I when I saw that movie for the first time, I was like, "There's gonna be a podcast in my life." Actually, I think I probably had started it already at this point. Yeah. Like Rob and I got that going, and I had already. Yeah. Anyway, um, we don't have a demerit for Godzilla yet. Doesn't really matter. We have lip service for Christmas Story too. What do you guys want to just so for? Uh, I mean, like I said, this is science, right? So we need to document anyway. What's the I, demerit for Godzilla? I'm still hung CGI. up on the rom com. Yeah, CGI is good uh, too because it's not great. Um, yeah, CGI to rom com. Yeah, cool. I dig it. All right, uh, the worst of the season by far, Christmas Story Two. Yeah. Uh, next Great. week, as you two just saw, we are doing the number twenty three. Thanks a lot, Bob. Listen, you know, I, I just I read that it was bad. I had not seen it. It is. I, bad. I, I, I have seen I couldn't it. get through it. I only saw the first like twenty minutes, and I couldn't get through it. It's pathetic. Is that isn't that like like the guy who wrote the book that Jim Carrey is reading his name like Topsy Kretz, but it's like Top Secrets when you say it? Fast. Yeah, it's something like yeah. that. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Topsy Kretz. <laughs> Who's Topsy Kretz? Uh, all right, so yeah, I you know I something I've observed is that the polls are interesting because. I genuinely don't know who's going to win every week. Sometimes it's yeah. Bob, sometimes it's Rob, sometimes it's Chris. So uh, I appreciate that our audience keeps it um, lively in that sense. Uh, Rob, why don't you plug us? I'll just say yeah. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. And then send it over to Bob for his last word. Sure. www.theworstmovieevermade.com. You can find us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Music, um, Overcast. You, you just, just go to your podcast app and search our name. We're there. Um, we also have a link to our YouTube where we post a video of the podcast every Sunday. We are on TikTok and Instagram. Bob posts trailers. We post polls every week as you had just heard us unpack one of them, which is why we're watching a Jim Carrey, one of the more ill-fated Jim Carrey movies of his mm. catalog, I would venture to say. Um, so it's Easily. all there. And then there's also a button for um, Alan or whatever his name is to email us about how we're ripping off um, another yeah. popular movie <laughs> bring podcast. It, bring it on, Alan. What's yeah. funny is if he does, then we know he listened. Yes. Fuck you, um, Alan. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Alan. Uh, what was it? I was, I was going to ask, is this our first Jim Carrey movie? Yes. No, we did The Grinch. Never mind. Oh, that's true yeah i forgot about that because yeah. it was bob crazy. you weren't on board yet were you no i was not you lucky luck i i hated the lucky grinch. son of a gun honestly <laughs> the the grinch i hate the way it looks i'm mm -hmm. not into those like prosthetic like creatures though like i also hated cat and hat quite a bit yeah. and people oh my God. the younger generation love cat and hat with mike meyer oh, i don't understand yeah. why so but they do yeah Whew. all right um love you guys last word thanks for listening Oh, last word. Worry about I was I was thinking uh, several words, but um, morning after queefed eggs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you next week, guys. <laughs>